Welcome to the Free From Binge Eating Podcast with me, Breed, your host. Binge eating sucks. Trust me, I know. I was stuck in that spiral of binge, restrict, diet, yo-yoing weight loss, feeling guilty and ashamed, and hating my body for 10 years. Now that I'm out, I'm turning my pain into purpose by helping you stop binging, start loving your body, self, and life again. It's time to live free from binge eating. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, welcome to another episode. Today we've got a guest on board, so I just want to jump into that conversation really soon. That's what you're here for. Quick intro on who our special guest is. This is Ashley. She has been on the the podcast actually two years ago and that was just after we finished working together in a one-to-one capacity so we did my 16-week journey together where she saw incredibly transformative growth her food relationship changed so much so definitely go listen to that episode to see that initial change I thought how cool would it be to get her back on board on the episode to give us an update like what does recovery look like two plus years down the line? You so often hear, you know, either the very start of someone's journey, whether it's your own or just someone, uh, you know, some wins that maybe I share on my social media of people doing the 30 day reboot, or you hear someone like me who's many years down the line. You don't often hear this in between. So I really wanted to share that. So she's on board today. Let's get straight into this. Welcome back, Ashley. So excited to have you back on. I was actually thinking about it before we hopped on. I think it's two years ago, almost, that you were on the pod. And then we worked together for several months. So it's been a while. I'm sure a lot has changed and happened since then. Uh, Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And yeah, because I actually yesterday was like, let me listen to it. I want to go back and listen. Yeah. I want to hear what I sound like. I want to listen to the whole episode. I went and listened to your hundredth episode with all like like little samples, and I was like, "Oh my god, you three thirty four. That sounds so <laughs> great." <laughs> so, yeah, well, yeah, I, I think it's gonna that. be yeah, it'd be super cool to. I'm very curious because obviously I don't I don't even know what you're gonna say in this episode, so I'm very curious to see how things have changed. I thought maybe to set the scene, you could give, as you just watched, listened to the episode yesterday, maybe like a quick recap on like where you were two years ago when we did that pod. And then, yeah, start to move into what is life like now? Yeah. So so when we did the podcast two years ago, we were wrapping up our 16 weeks together. Mm-hmm. And like you kind of mentioned on the hundredth episode, I was like, we were doing the program and I was so excited to be doing it, but I still had a lot holding me back for a big part of us working together. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I would restrict one food, but then, you know, restrict a different one. And then it wasn't until maybe like 10 weeks, in maybe eight weeks into our program, when I went on, I went on a girl's trip. I had like the worst bender, binge bender, probably of my life, mm-hmm. like a four day bender, um, where I made myself so physically and emotionally ill. And like, that was my, like, that was the real, like, okay, like you're doing this, but you're doing it half ass, Like, who the fuck wants to live like this? This is insane. Yeah. And I came back and you remember because we had a call and I like was like, I can't talk to you. Like I am a fucking <laughs> mess. And I hung up and I think you and I both were like, where do we go from here? Like, I think you probably were worried, like, is she going to keep going? Cause I was just so low. Um, and then I feel like the rest of our time together, like our last six weeks was like, the most productive of our whole 16 weeks together because I was like it really was so clear that my life was so toxic I was ruining every experience like vacations time with my family time with my friends I couldn't even like enjoy my life anymore like I was suffering every you know part of my life was suffering and so we did that podcast we had wrapped it up and I was in a really good headspace um because I was like we're moving forward and going to continue the healing journey um and then you know I'd say like the really really hard stuff started after 
for that podcast mm-hmm. because I specifically remember probably a month after that podcast, I said to my husband, who, by the way, was like so supportive of our work together. He was so thrilled to see me getting help. He saw mm-hmm. how, you know, he saw what a bad place I was in. And I said to him, and I felt, I always felt like he was a real safe space. I never felt like he only wanted me like thin and sexy. He just wanted to be like happy. Like he'd always say when I was really sick, like, I miss you. Mm. Like I was there physically, like my body, but I was such a shell of myself during my eating disorder. He was just like, I miss you. Like, you know, whatever you're trying to do here and this like extreme lifestyle, like you're not even yourself anymore. So I knew that like, I never felt pressure, at least in my relationship, to be, like, the sexiest, the skinniest, right. the skinniest. We just wanted to have, like, fun, like we used to. And so I remember about a month after the podcast saying, like, babe, I think I'm going to, like, put on a lot of weight over the next few months mm-hmm. because, like, I'm really going to throw my hands up and, like, really, really, really let go. And he was like, okay. And I was like, I guess I just like had to say it out loud to someone because I just knew it was going to happen. Yeah. And so I remember on the podcast, we had mentioned that like over a year, like I gently let myself put on like 15, 20 pounds. And that was mm-hmm. like a big deal for someone that was like the skinny, hot, fit chick. Like those 20 pounds were like earth shattering. Well, after the podcast, over the next four months, I put on another 40. Mm-hmm. Because I went like all in lifted every single potential restriction, got, took off the Apple watch, hit, like, threw away the food scales, like, any measuring, and I literally was, like, every single day, I will eat till full satiation, period, and that's exactly what I did, and it was terrifying, as, like, little by little, like, yeah, like, all the clothes stopped fitting, and I think I would send you messages because my body, not just the weight gain, but like my body was having a really drastic reaction to me allowing myself to have all the food that I wanted um, that I hadn't regularly had in so long. So I remember being like, te- like texting you a message and you saying like, I'm so swollen, like my mm-hmm. hands are swollen, my face is swollen, like my body was like really hanging on to like water and like just really reacting to this process, but I was really committed to it. And it was like, it was, yeah, like, I'm not even going to lie. It was hard. The weight gain portion was hard, but like just so necessary. And I think that because when we ended, I was like, I'm not living in fight it with fear anymore. I'm not going to let fear run my life. So this like fear of not being like pretty and thin, I just was like, fuck it. And so once I like released that fear mm-hmm. and I just said, I'm only going to listen to my body and my hunger, like that was it. And like, really the rest is history. What do you feel like allowed you to get to that point where you could say, fuck it, I'm just going to move through this fear. Cause I know I'm sure like several points in the past you just would have not let yourself get to that point like to allow yourself to gain the weight that you needed to I just like I think for me I think that I think a lot of times when you're like in the midst of an eating disorder or restriction you train yourself to like ignore all of your cues like Mm -hmm. you ignore your hunger cues you ignore your needs you ignore your body you learn to just like push that all aside and just like either not eat or overeat and so I think that for me I just knew like in my gut in my heart in my soul that this cycle was going to continue the cycle that I've been on for 25 years of like diet restrict overeat or like it just I knew it would never end and I saw like everything and every facet of my life was suffering the only thing Mm -hmm. I had to show for all this work I was doing was like a socially acceptable body a body that like socially would be called like hot fit sexy Mm -hmm. like my marriage was unraveling my relationship with my kids was deteriorating my friendships were suffering my job was suffering like 
my happiness, like everything in my life was suffering. And so like, I was like, I don't want to lose everything while striving for this body. Like it just wasn't worth it anymore. I just mm-hmm. was like, I just want to be happy. Yeah. And so I chose like striving for that happiness and that peace, like over my fear. Amazing. And uh... Okay, so you went through probably the hardest parts then after we finished working together. How did Mm -hmm. that continue to go until like today? What did that keep looking like? Yeah, so I think that for sure, like listen, weight gain is is shocking. And I also think because I worked like so hard to lose all that weight, pushed my body to the extreme and we remember from that mm-hmm. my last podcast, like extreme. I had no period. My hormones were fucked. My thyroid was fucked. I had a heart condition. Like I pushed my body so far to get to where I'd been. And so it's like, yes, it was very scary. So that weight gain, it was overwhelming. And I remember saying um, to you and saying to other people, like, I hate the way my body looks, but I love my life. Mm-hmm. And like, that was at the time that for a while, that's how I felt for many, many months. I was like, I don't want to look in the mirror. I don't want to see myself when I get out of the shower, but I love my life. Like I love ha- having fun with my husband again. I love being absorbed in my kids again. And like really having fun with my friends, not pretending to have fun and like sitting at the table and like making sure I only eat lettuce, like actually having fun. And so I feel like sometimes to a girl, like the biggest fear is like not feeling beautiful. And I was like, well, I don't feel beautiful and my life is amazing. So like, Mm -hmm. I mean, wow, I can't believe I put so much emphasis on that. And so, yeah, like it was shocking. Like, you know, everything in my life for a while was about being like fit. I'm fit. Like I'm fit. And like, I had to like let that persona go. But, um, you know, it takes time. I think that, I think a lot of people fear the healing process because it's like that time frame of like a shift and maybe weight gain and maybe not feeling confident. Like that sounds so scary, but like the reality was, and like what I thought was going to be the scariest thing ever is when like I finally started to thrive and like everything just started feeling better. And I just started feeling at peace. And then, like, here we are now today, like, I can absolutely look at myself in the mirror. Um, I think- Although I'm you guys beautiful. might not see her in the video right now, but she's looking stunning. <laughs> she's like, done up for the video. Here's me <laughs> with no makeup. I'm like, oh shit, I, I dressed down for this. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, no, I had, a meeting. I had a meeting today, that's why. No, it's for you, it's for you. But- um, no, I, I, I like, I'm very comfortable being in a bigger body. I'm very, um, like I, 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 that lack of confidence that I had for a while, that is gone. Like I, I am a confident person. I'm not 10% body fat. You mm-hmm. know, I, I feel really good. And I think that that just comes with time and yeah. healing you know Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah time can do wonders I feel like yeah it just gives Mm -hmm. you it gives you the time to adapt like change that identity that you had about yourself even even adapt like practically like oh let me get new clothes that actually fit this different body Mm -hmm. yeah but all new clothes Mm -hmm. like even like silly things I was like well I'm gonna change my Instagram name because Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about food anymore like I was a foodie because I starved myself all the time, and I was like, obsessed with watching, like, videos about food. Mm-hmm. I'm totally not a foodie. I don't give three fucks about food. So I was like, <laughs> fit foodie doesn't really fit me more, because fitness isn't my, like, being, like, the fittest person, that's not my priority, and I'm definitely not a foodie. Um, you know, I love to lift, and I love to go to the gym, like, for me, because it feels good, but it's just, that's not, like, the number one I like that's not my identifying personality trait like I feel Mm -hmm. like now I'm more myself like people I feel see me as like 
funny and lighthearted and compassionate and spontaneous, like all the things I couldn't be when I was sick. Mm -hmm. It's definitely an interesting shift, but like, you know, it's like, as I, and I was like, I was taking videos of myself and writing, journaling the whole process because Mm -hmm. I don't want to forget the journey. Like it was such a journey, but like, I like, yeah, in the beginning, like, when I like threw my hands up and said like we are doing this we are going all in oh yeah like I ate everything all Mm -hmm. the things and I mean like I was so hungry my appetite you know my appetite and my hunger really had to regulate I was like wow like I can't even believe how much how hungry I am but like to anyone that like is just starting that process like it it settles Like, I cannot even, honestly, I can't believe the amount of food I used to be able to eat. Even though I was, like, such a small person, my hunger was just insatiable. Mm -hmm. And, like, I could eat a whole, like, eight-slice pizza by myself. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like, I don't know how I did that. Like, I could (laughs) never, never. But, like, I just don't, I feel like I don't have a huge appetite anymore. Like, Mm -hmm. I never been able to say that in my whole life like when I was 10 I was like why am I hungrier than all my friends now like I'm the person that takes home leftovers at a restaurant I'm the person that like leaves food on her plate I've never been that person but it's just I like trusted the process Mm -hmm. and like you said I would get there and like I did you sure did so fascinating to hear how things are. Um, one question that people actually wrote in about was how long did it take for you to stabilize the weight that you gained and also the hunger cue situation as well? Mm-hmm. So I think that a dangerous, so here's the reality. Like you, my sweet little angel breed you are a slim girl right so like you're a girl like you live the binge restrict life like you ate the jars of Nutella you did it you did the thing like like all of us girls that are with you but you did end up at least where you are now in your journey as a small body person and the other person the only other person I'd really heard of of like lifting all the restriction and like doing this all in thing with Stephanie Buttermore who I know you and I have talked about Mm -hmm. who also after her journey of like gaining 60 pounds like lost it all and like now she's like you know she's a peanut like you Mm -hmm. and so I think it's important you know for women to see that like we're not everyone's gonna end up as a small bodied person right so like I, you know, from the beginning of, you know, deciding like, wow, I'm really sick to like us working together to the end, like I gained a total of 80 pounds. Like Mm -hmm. that's, that's, oh wait, no, not 80. Hold on. Math. Oh, I hate math. (laughs) Sorry. 60. Forgive me. 60 all together. Um, which is a big deal. Like that's a lot of women. Five foot two. That was a lot. Um, I remember watching Stephanie Buttermore's journey and she put on 50 pounds like that. And I, like when I went all in, because I would say it took like 6,000 calories a day to get me full for a mm-hmm. while for probably like, I would say for, for two months, my appetite was like that. And then slowly after like the two month mark, just started like settling and settling and settling. So um, you know, I don't, I don't do like any tracking, weighing, whatever. The only way I know what's going on weight wise measurements is my yearly physical. Mm-hmm. So I gained 60 pounds and I settled uh, 10 less. So altogether, I am 50 pounds up. Mm-hmm. I didn't lose all the weight that I gained and I maybe never will. Um, what I will say is like the swelling, like even though like I've only, like only 10 pounds ends up coming off. I feel like my face and my neck and my wrist, like, like someone made a comment like, oh, you look like you've lost a bunch of weight, which like a lot of people comment about bodies, but I haven't. I think it was just 
uh, the swelling, which was driving me insane when that water just started like chilling out a little bit. So in terms of the weight, didn't lose at all. This is where my body is happy Mm -hmm. and it might always be happy here. In terms of the hunger for that question, I would say like it took like a solid two months of being all in before my body slowly and gra- like I mean gradually but what I will say is like that time frame after we finished our 16 weeks when I was just lifted all restriction there was no binging there was no like gorging myself till I was sick I legit was just eating till I was full and at the time it took a lot to get me mm-hmm. full like I wanted to feel that feeling of fullness on a regular basis so badly but um, like I haven't had like a binge in two years. Like I, I mm-hmm. that yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, I would say like that's it. It is a process, like yes. little stepping stone by stepping stone. It just takes time. Yes. And so, okay, first of all, congrats, two years plus whatever, no binge. I'm going to pause right there for a minute to share something with you. So if you've been listening so far and feel like you're ready to start your recovery journey with me, I've got the perfect springboard. That is my free masterclass, why you're still binge eating and how to stop. It's a 35 minute free video masterclass where I'll walk through all of the reasons you might still be binging. Then I'll give you three actionable steps to stop binge eating. So if you're looking for actual results in your life, want to never binge again, trust me, I know the feeling, I was stuck for 10 years doing that, then head to the show notes to get instant access today. I'll also gift you something for joining me at the masterclass, but I'll leave that surprise for you to find out for yourself. Life is just so damn short and it's not worth feeling so miserable, unhappy, unhealthy with binging taking over. So watch the masterclass today to start your new life Okay, let's get back into the show. Are you consciously thinking these days, like, oh, how can I not end up going down that cycle? Or is, is I think just so different for you now that it's like, that's not even going to happen. So, so I think it's interesting that I don't think it's a coincidence that over the last like three, four years, I, a lot of recovering addicts have stumbled into my life and like Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a coincidence I must be like putting some type of energy out for like um you know uh, alcoholics in AA um, like drug addicts that are in recovery so I I kind of like I've never been addicted to like a substance but like I did obviously have a very unhealthy relationship with food and I feel like you know just like like one of my girlfriends, she's been in AA now for probably 20 years. Mm-hmm. So will she ever like take a sip of vodka? N- never. Like she would never, ever even tempt herself. Can she sit next to me at a bar while I have a sip of vodka? Absolutely. In her first year of recovery, could she sit in a bar? No. Mm-hmm. So like, I feel like, I guess I just find a lot of addicts experiences very relatable. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think the first thing is that, and I just like made a post about this is like, I'm never going to call myself recovered. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to be reco- in recovery for the rest of my life. And I'm totally okay with that. Cause I feel like once you say like, I'm recovered, I'm all better. Then you could slip into dangerous behaviors or put yourself mm-hmm. in situations that aren't great. So, um, you know, my head is very clear. I don't find myself ever thinking about like restricting or binging or dieting or losing weight. I don't think like that. It's definitely not even in my realm, but like mm-hmm. I do, I have like stayed away from certain things. Like I will not put on my Apple watch. I don't want to, I don't think it's healthy for me I don't need to see how many calories my friends are burning like when their alerts pop up and I don't really give a shit how many I burn during my workouts like my workouts are fire and I don't like and I know that so like I don't need a watch to tell me that um 
food scales are like not a part of my life anymore. It's mm-hmm. funny because my husband and my son were just like building a car for like a Cub Scout derby race and to like weigh out all the little weights. And he was like, where, don't we have like a little food scale? Where is it? And I was like, I have no idea. Like I haven't seen that thing in years. Like, you know, um, and like calorie tracking, like macro tracking, that's just not something I involve myself in. And like, I remember, um, as I was gaining weight, I reached out to you and you were talking about like, you know, I was saying like, all I want is like bagels and pasta and like cake. And you were like talking about gently, in a gentle way, you know, trying to make healthier options. So like, while I will like try to get some protein at every meal, because like, I know it's good for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be, I'm not tracking like, was it 10 grams? Was it right. Like, so like, I just, I don't think it's good for me and I'm just not interested to do any of those things. Um, but I also feel like I'm around a lot of people who like fitness and macro tracking is a big part of their life. And like, mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. You know, like I don't need to like not go to the gym or like not be around people that live that kind of lifestyle. I just don't. And I won't mm-hmm. for now mm-hmm. or maybe forever. Cool. And tell us then, okay, in general, what is your food relationship like these days? Like, what are your thoughts around food? Do you like prioritize certain things? Yeah, what does it look like? So I would say like the only, like there's kind of like three gentle, like gentle nutrition things I try to tell Mm -hmm. myself to do regularly, which is drink enough water. I think that's important <laughs> and try to get some protein in at every meal mm-hmm. um that was something that was very very hard for me and I think a lot of girls that are recovering can relate to this is I disdained all the food that were things that I ate constantly when I was sick so in the beginning of my recovery I couldn't eat vegetables like any because I used to live on vegetables mm-hmm. couldn't eat um like eggs and egg whites, not do chicken, like was like no. So there was times, there was days that I was just getting like, no, I was getting no protein in my, in my diet because I just couldn't stand it. Like protein shakes, like which I used to live on. Mm-hmm. But so I would say like, there's definitely, like I definitely still have some aversions. Um, so I have to like encourage myself. Like I can't go near it. Like, I don't know if I can ever eat an egg again. Like, I don't know if I can ever eat an egg white ever again. I used to, like, scramble, like, a whole carton of egg whites by the end of every day when I was sick. Like, wow. Because I was like, it's high protein and has no calories. So that's, uh, it's my gentle reminders every day to, like, girlfriend, get your water in, try to get some veggies in today, and, like, let's try to get some protein in at every meal. Aside from that, my relationship with food is like I don't have a relationship with mm-hmm. food. When I'm hungry, I eat, and when I'm not hungry, I don't. I act. I absolutely hate the feeling of being really full. Um, it, and so, as someone who used to like binge and completely ignore fullness and just eat till like my stomach was suspended out to the wall, I hate that feeling. And so, I definitely like. For, like like to stop when I'm starting to feel full cause I don't like that feeling mm-hmm. but I really don't have a relationship with food and I also think that I was talking to my husband about this like I'm very blessed in that like I there are people out there that like don't know where they're going to get their next meal right there's people out there that like are in really dire situations I'm a very like blessed person and I will never have to worry about if I'm going to have another meal. I'll never have to worry about like if me and my kids have enough food. There's, oh, I will always have access to food. So like if I'm rushing out to a meeting and like I didn't get to grab breakfast at the house, like I'll get it somewhere on the road. Mm-hmm. Like I know that I'll always have access to food and I never ever am like panicked about like packing extra snacks or like pack like there's food everywhere. I can always get some. And that's just like never a concern of mine. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting to see 
you know, these sort of like three kind of principles that you roughly live by the way that you worded it of like, oh, let's try to get protein at each meal. Like how gentle and chilled out that is. It's like, let's try to get just, you know, generally enough or more, whatever, protein or veggies compared to what it would have been like a few years ago. And it's also like, and it's also just like not a rule. Cause like if yes. for dinner, I just want some pasta with butter with my kids mm-hmm. and like I have no protein or veggie that night. Like I definitely don't eat like that every single day, but like, if that's what I want, like, I'm not like, oh, we got to make sure I get the rule of chicken and broccoli in there. Like, no, what does have? Like, that's just not something I thought I could ever do. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, I'm the same as well. It's just like, roughly, oh, let's try to think about getting veggies in yeah. at least a few times a day or something. Um, yeah, fascinating to see the difference. Mm-hmm. And, uh, okay, so I'm curious, you know, where you are now looking forward what are the main things, if there's anything that you're, that you're like focused on improving or, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that I am really in love with my life and I love just being present and really being absorbed in like the now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I... I I had wrote in when you posted that like you know one of like the the hardest thing for me about recovery for me is like mourning what I missed. That's like really hard to live with. Like I missed my kids when they were like still in diapers. I missed a lot of memories with my husband and with them and I can't get that back. Like I can't get my baby back when he was two and I don't remember like that whole year. And like, that's Mm -hmm. really like, I don't beat myself up really about anything, but like that is hard to like the guilt. And like, I I'm sad that I missed out on things that I can't get back, especially when it comes to like, God, they're only babies once. So that's really sad to me. That is the hardest part. It's like Mm -hmm. morning that stuff but now like I don't miss anything like I just want to be absorbed in like everything right now and so I'd say like all I want to do is like just keep being really present like I feel so good um and it's really important to me like my peace and my happiness are just they mean so much to me and my relationships with my husband and my kids and my family and my friends are just too important. Like they're so important to me, you know? I mean, I would say down the line future, maybe I would love to help people like you do. Um, But A, it takes a lot of guts and it's scary. You know, um, I have a full-time job. I have a seven-year-old and a five-year-old. Um, so it's, and I'm such a procrastinator. So <laughs> I would love to do that. I would love to help other people. Um, and I like share little bits and pieces on social media, but not consistently. But whenever <laughs> I do, the feedback I get is like, holy shit why don't I do this more? Because people are like, this is me. Oh my God. I hate when people say like, this is so brave because to me, like brave is like going to war and fighting for your country. Like I'm just sharing Mm -hmm. because I'm an extrovert and I can't stop talking. Like that's not brave. (laughs) That's just like me being a Gemini from New Jersey. But um, yeah, just the things that people say makes me realize like, wow, it's really, really powerful to share like the hard stuff and it really resonates with a lot of people so that would be like an amazing goal for me Mm -hmm. Um, we'll see I can see it I can see it (laughs) I mean literally anytime I see your social media I'm like I'm just like this is her calling she's like (laughs) she has all the things you need all the ingredients you need for this and um yeah I can always see that we'll see we'll see but yeah, I'm excited for you. So to close off, 
are, do you have any final words for, let's say someone who is at that point where they're feeling the extreme hunger, they are still one foot in, one foot out, scared of weight mm-hmm. gain, scared of it all. What would yeah. you say to them? Um, well, I would say like, just do it scared. Mm. Do it scared. Um, I remember you and I used to always say, you know, like, what's the scariest thing that could happen if you like make a scary decision? And like the worst thing that could happen, in my opinion, is like you die, right? And I, yeah. I use this example all the time. Like you're not going to die. You won't die. And just do it scared until it's not so scary. And it'll get less and less scary until it's not scary at all. I think, you know, I know that men and women struggle with a lot of body image stuff. But I do really feel like as a woman, we put so much emphasis on how we look and how men think we look, and if we're sexy, and, you know, there is so much life beyond that, like, I, listen, I lived life in a body that was, like, I guess, probably the quote-unquote sexiest, like, body I've ever had, and, like, I literally, like, almost lost my marriage, like, Mm -hmm. I was so, uh, distant and just not present like in that body I was like losing relationships in my life so like now thick curvy human that just eats food and doesn't like stare at her apple watch all day like I I'm so like I'm so excited like that my marriage did make it through and that my husband did stick by my side when I was literally at my lowest I'm so excited for like all the amazing things I get to do now. I've taken some amazing vacations with friends and with my husband while I've been in recovery. And they've been like the best trips, like just travel and not pack protein bars and protein and all this bullshit, like, and just like go and live. Like, I think that anyone that is sick with an eating disorder related situation right now, you know, you're not living right now. Mm -hmm. You know, that so much of your energy and time and brain capacity is poured into food. That's not living. Like, and I think deep down, I think that's what a lot of people that are sick want to do. They just like want to find a way to live. And um, yeah, so I say, do it scared. It won't be that scary forever. And there's so much life beyond focusing on your like physical aesthetics. Yes. Definitely do it scared anyway. It's no longer scary. It's going to be worth it. The positives start to outweigh any of the negatives or perceived negatives, at least. Totally. Awesome. Well, words of wisdom. So glad we had you on here to share (laughs) the story further down the line. Because I feel like a lot of people, they see like either someone like me who's even further down the line or someone who's at the very start, like themselves, for example. Yeah. You don't see this more like the in between. So I'm really glad we had you on here. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure and I'm happy to share and I love you, my newly engaged little angel. Okay. And <laughs> congratulations. And yeah, and you know, like if anyone ever needs help or wants to talk or just, you know, wants to vent, like you can give anyone my name. I'm 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 here for anyone that wants to talk and just read. I love you so much. Thank you for giving me my life back. I love you so much. I love you too. I'm so glad we got to work <laughs> together. Okay, well, everyone, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. And that's the scoop for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something new that you can start applying to your life. It really helps my podcast to grow and reach more women who are struggling as well when you rate and review. So if you've got a spare minute, I would appreciate it so much if you could rate and review. And if you took something from this episode, it would mean the world to me if you could share it with someone in your life change someone's day, mood, or even their life. Be that person. I know I absolutely love it when my sister sends me podcast episodes. It just shows me she's thinking of me and she wants to help me elevate alongside her. As always, feel free to DM me on Instagram at freewithbreed. I'm always open for feedback and let me know what you want me to speak about on the podcast because after all, this podcast is for you. Okay, that's it from me. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time.